Hi there, I'd like to show you how to use Google Groups. And the reason I'm doing it as a screencast is when you're doing a tutorial or a training session with people, often it's very difficult to demonstrate this because a lot of them don't actually have access to groups. And this is typically something your administrator would do. So most people don't ever need to do this. However, if you're studying for a level one or level two certification, it is something you need to know the basics of. And that's what I'm going to show you right now. So I'm going up here to groups.google.com. And I'll just tap enter and it will take me to Google Groups. And Google Groups looks something like this. I have a lot of groups in this example. You might come to this page and it will be completely empty. So don't panic. Uh, you just haven't made a group yet. What a group is, is a way of sending an email to one email address that has many members. And when you send to that one email address, it actually distributes to all the members in the group. So rather than um, emailing individual people all the time, if you're constantly emailing group, you can make a group and then send one email to many people at a time. And obviously you can adjust the membership of that group. You can add new people if you need to, take old people out and so on. All right, how do you do it? Let's click on this group button up here, create group. It will open up a list and we can call it anything we like. I'm gonna call mine uh, Cool Kids. Right, and you can see what it does is it creates a group email address down here, cool-kids.group uh, at gaif.me. This will be the name of whatever your school is. And you can give it a, a description here, the cool kids. Right, and um, so we do whatever we want there. Say next. And then you have a few settings you need to choose from. And different groups behave in different ways. Some are used within the school, some are used externally. You could have a parent group, you could have a group for your local, I don't know, sports club. Like you can create a group for all sorts of purposes. And obviously they would need to behave slightly differently depending on the purpose. So some decisions you need to think about. When you create this group, who should be allowed to search for it? Should it be only the group members? Anyone in your school or organization? Or anyone on the web? You can make that decision. I'll make mine, I make mine just the school. Who can join the group? So maybe they can find it, but can they join it? So maybe anyone can use it. Maybe you've got to be invited. Maybe anyone can ask to join it, but they have to be approved. Or just maybe anyone can join. So let's say anyone in the organization can join, let's just say. And then you can say, well, who can view the conversations that are taking place in this group? Should it be everyone in the entire school, just the members of the group, just the managers of the group, or only the group owner? Let's make it only the group members. What about who can post? Well, I think group members probably in this instance, but you can choose. Who can view the members? Perhaps you want to control a little bit of the privacy of these members and you don't want one member seeing the details of another member. You can control that by changing it so only the group managers or even the group owners, if you like, can see the members. I'm going to make it managers for now. So you make those settings. Very important you choose sensibly there. Obviously, you can come back and change them at any time, but give some thought to how you'd like this to behave. Once you've done that, you can come in here and now add members to the group. So I'm going to add a few members. I'm going to add Bart, and I'm going to add Lisa, and where is she there? And I'm going to add Maggie, like that. So I now have some members in the group, and you can see I've added them to the group members box here. But I might want to add a manager as well. So maybe uh, Marge and Homer are going to be managers of this group. So I have some members, I have some managers that have some extra powers, and I have the owner of the group, which is me. I can like write a little message here. Hi, cool kids. Welcome, All right? Put whatever you like there. And then decide when you send this out, you can get people to get each email as it arrives. A digest kind of gathers them all together into one group email, so they're not getting multiple emails during the day. A bridge gives them shortened versions that they need to click on to go and read the full email, or you can turn email off completely. I'm going to set it to each email, and be aware that once people are in the group, they can go in and they can change those settings, so they can choose to move to digest or abridged if they prefer to, or turn email off. I'm choosing here to directly add these members. If I didn't add this, they would get an invitation to join, and they would have to actually accept the invitation. But I'm just directly adding them here. So we say create a group. It will chug away for a moment and create that group like so. It gives me a little summary to say this is what's about to happen. I've created a group called Cool Kids. The address is cool-kids.group at gaif.me. And these are the people that are part of this group. Now, if I go to the group, and you can actually see in the background here in this grayed out area, there's the group that just got made. Okay, so that's it's been created. I'm going to go straight to the group by going in here. 
And the first time you do this, you may not see the people showing up immediately. You might actually have to refresh the page. So I'm just going to do that. Just refresh that page. And uh, sometimes it does take a minute for them to just sort of, you know, appear in that group. So we'll just do it again. Uh, and we might just do it one more time. It can take a few moments for it to actually happen. Uh, but it will actually happen. I won't rush it right now. So that's how you create the group. So you create the group, you give it a name, the name becomes part of the email address, then you decide on the settings for the group, and then you populate it with the members of the group. And hopefully now if I refresh that, we might see it. Oh, I'm on the member, I need to go to the members page. <gasps> Silly me. Okay, there you go. I've gone to the members page here, and you can see these are the members of the group. And you can see what their permissions are here. So I'm the owner, um, uh, Maggie's a member, Marge is a manager, Homer is a manager, Bart's a member, and so on. And I can, I can upgrade or downgrade people depending on what they want to do. And each individual person can choose whether they want to change the way they receive email or not. Um, and if someone is being naughty and say Bart's doing the wrong thing, I can go in here and sort of uh, not allow Bart to post messages. Or I could moderate the messages and say, you know, they get checked before they're allowed to go and everyone sees them. So lots of control. Group's definitely awesome. Typically not the sort of thing you would deal with on a daily basis. And hence, that's why I'm making this video for you so you can see how it works. Uh, and this is the sort of thing you would probably need to know for a level one or level two certification. Hope that helps.